Hello folks and welcome to this week's Hi-Fi News Etc. I have some news for you obviously and at the end instead of a hint tip thing I have a bit of a, a bit of a news feature because there's a bit of an extended newsy piece. It's all about vinyl. Vinyl per se. So we'll get to that in a moment. For now, trivia. We are changing the theme this time to personal, social and health education, as I like to call it. And the question for this week is, which two of these celebrated couples never actually got married? Bit of a gossip one, this one, hey? And those couples are Mick Jagger and Jerry Hall, Lisa Marie Presley and Michael Jackson, Paul Simon and Carrie Fisher, Chrissy Hind and Jim Kerr, and Rod Stewart and Britt Eklund. One more time. Which two of these celebrated couples never actually got married? You may have thought they were married, but actually they were not. Which two of these couples then? And they are Mick Jagger and Jerry Hall, Lisa Marie Presley and Michael Jackson, Paul Simon and Carrie Fisher, Chrissy Hind and Jim Kerr, and Rod Stewart and Britt Eklund. As per usual, no Googling, please, because I'm sure you'll find the answers online. Just have a little think and muse upon the issues, and I will tell you the answer, or answers in this case, at the end of the video. But first, we start over here and Hi Fi News. Now first up we have Q Acoustics and the M40 powered micro towers. These are compact 71 centimeters tall speakers featuring 2 by 100 watts of power with wireless streaming via Bluetooth 5.0 with ActX HD compatibility. Featuring also a C cubed continuous curved cone design in the mid-base driver areas that apparently, according to the company, ensures a smooth performance. You also reportedly get good integration with the tweeter. The M40 also features a decoupled tweeter along with Helmholtz pressure equalizer technology to reduce unwanted standing waves inside the cabinet. Speaking of which, we also have point-to-point -point internal bracing to keep that speaker cabinet rigid. Stops vibration and all that jazz. There's also an EQ switch on the back to let the system know if each speaker is positioned in a corner, against a wall, or in free space. Available in black, white, and walnut. The Q Acoustics M40 is available now, and I will add some links down below so you can check it out more. I have three prices. We have in pounds, £749 of the pair. We have €899 Euros or $999. Next up, a bit of advice, watch out for Samsung. Now, I've said this before actually, but whenever you see the umbrella hi-fi brand Harman, and Harman is a hi-fi brand in and of itself, it's it produced its own, what, amplifiers and receivers and so on in the past, you should read Samsung because Samsung owns Harman. So watch out for Samsung in the hi-fi space. In fact, Samsung is building a bit of an empire is building a hi-fi industry presence, almost by stealth, because no one talks about Samsung, particularly in hi-fi terms. So Samsung owns Harman, but that ain't all. It owns JBL. It owns AKG, the excellent headphones brand. It owns Arcam. It owns Lexicon and Mark Levinson and the DBX noise reduction technology. I didn't know about this until recently. Ravel, the speaker people, Studer, you know, the top end reel to reel people who do studio equipment still, owned by Samsung. Crown, which is an older American 
brand, isn't it? Uh, owned by Samsung, BSS Audio, Becker, Infinity, Soundcraft. They bought Rune recently. And they haven't stopped there. They have just purchased within the last day or two, 107 audio patents from a company called Knowles, who I wasn't really aware of. Knowles apparently are known, well, not to me, obviously, but generally speaking, to the people in the know for building quality drivers within in-ear monitors. They have all kinds of advanced techie patents, and they've sold a whole heap of them to Samsung. Patents like surround noise suppression, noise cancellation, audio processing, that kind of thing. So to repeat, Samsung is building a bit of an empire. There's even talk about new in-car hi-fi platforms for electric cars based on Harman technology. The fact that Apple recently announced they're pulling out of the self-drive car business also put a smile on Samsung's faces recently because Apple, it was thought, would be developing their own in-car entertainment systems as well. They might still do that, but Apple has dumped billions of dollars worth of investments in their car business in the bin. So the feeling is that Samsung has a bit of an advantage in that area now. Watch out for Samsung. Speaking of headphones, which we almost were, Sennheiser has released the Accentum. I think that's how you pronounce them. Accentum? I think that's it. Accentum. Sounds a bit weird when you say it out loud. Nevertheless, these are wireless headphones and they support Bluetooth 5.2 and the Aptex HD codec. They have touch gesture controls on the ear cup, lots of taps and swipes and no buttons apparently, and it supports the hybrid adaptive noise cancellation feature within these new designs. There's a reported, what, 50 hours of play between charges, but if you're in a bit of a rush and you give these headphones a quick, what, 10 minute charge, that apparently will give you five hours of play. In techie terms, these headphones, the Accentum, are based on 37 millimeter dynamic drivers, and you also get a five band EQ option to modify the sound itself. Price, well, two prices. I either have £260 or $229.90. Again, I'll put links below if you want to explore. Finally, in the news section, Waterfall has released the Niagara XT speakers. Well, and these look rather interesting because they have transparent cabinets, specifically transparent platinum safety glass enclosures. They also feature custom built mid base atom drivers, and there is a 21mm passive driver in the down firing position, and that is placed within the CNC cut brushed tapered aluminium base. These drivers are equipped with jet stream damping technology to lower the noise. The speaker base itself is housed in hand stitched Napa leather. More specifically, the top of the range Niagara XT3 includes a glass horn tweeter mechanically decoupled from the main speaker body. The XT1 and the XT2 each feature a wood on Twitter. Now, rather frustratingly, I have no prices for these things. But if you said to me, Paul, how much do these things cost? And I said to you, a lot, that might give you a general idea. I think I'd be on safe ground there. That, my friends, is your news. Let's do a news feature thing. As 
I say, instead of hitting you with a hint or tip, I have more news, but something a little bit different. This one is vinyl based, and it goes on a bit, hence why it's separated from the other news. Now, I've been hearing about a new way of making vinyl records, that is, an alternative to using PVC to create vinyl. The new system is called Eco Record, and is from a pressing plant based in Germany, and they are called Sonopress. Now, this is not the first time for me, or I'm sure for you, where we've heard of PVC alternatives. They come out of the woodwork every now and again, there's a bit of a hoo-ha, there's a bit of a big splash, and then they all disappear. Well, I wonder about this one. There are possibilities here which may or may not work, but when a respected German company gets involved, I at least pay attention, even briefly. Now, Sonopress is heavily into media creation and distribution. It's a big player. It creates CDs and DVDs and Blu-ray discs and 4K discs and now vinyl. It also works with high-end companies in the gaming sector, in the TV area, in video and audio fields and more. Now for this project, it's been working with Warner Music to offer an alternative to PVC as a vinyl record base. It's developed something called PET, which stands for, and this is going to be a challenge folks, polyethylene tariff phthalate, I think that's correct. Now, this is a fully recyclable product, and it does not need the usual steam or natural gas power to power the presses. In fact, the company says that the environmental impact when creating a PET record is down by 85%. So a bit more detail then. Well, PET is the result of circular recycling, apparently. That's what it's called, circular recycling. This is a type of recycling developed exclusively by a chemical company called SK. Now, in terms of the core tech, this is an SK thing. Sonopress is there for the production to actually produce the vinyl. For the underlying tech, it's SK. Apparently, no one else in the world is doing this. SK is the only one, well, at least not yet. Hey, this is not a process I'm completely familiar with. I have to explain this. but. From what I know, instead of the usual method of vinyl recycling, because vinyl recycling is not new, is it? We all know this, I think. But that old system, you would normally cut PVC records into tiny flakes, then you give them a good clean, then you push them into a press, a vinyl press, and then you make some new records, and Bob's your uncle. Well, SK doesn't do that. SK apparently reduces the plastic right back down to raw material level. In fact, SK is working with a Chinese company to break the polymers back to monomers. Actually, the notion of breaking polymers down into monomers, you do this every day when you eat food. So when you grab a food, it's a polymer. It consists of many different ingredients. You put it in your mouth. Your stomach breaks all that down into individual monomers, into basic building blocks, you might say. And that's what's happening here. This means, according to the company, that the quality of the material can be maintained and recycling can be done multiple times without affecting that quality. And that's always been the issue in the past with recycled vinyl. Recycled vinyl always sounded worse. Well, Apparently, they've cracked it this time. So this is a Sonopress SK partnership, and this has pushed Sonopress back into vinyl production for the first time in almost 30 years. Now, to create an Eco Record, I wish they'd have found a better name. <laughs> Eco Record just sounds naff. It really does. <sighs> anyway, to <laughs> it doesn't sound good. Anyway, to create an Eco Record, to create an eco record, you need, of all things, an injection molding machine with nozzle contact pressures of up to 300 tons. Now, there's been an awful lot of work going on in the background, about two years' worth, I believe. They've been building the machines, lots of research, etc. And the end of last year, I think it was last December, they kind of announced 
all this was happening. And that's when I first heard about it. They've been creating specialized tools, additional equipment, and all of that has been developed entirely by Sonopress. That's their side of the, the deal, their side of the bargain. Apparently, Sonopress is using the same injection molding processes that have been used for decades to produce laser discs and CDs and DVDs and other digital storage media. So I'm making this in March 2024, last month of February. Well, that's when the official announcement was made. They had a bit of a, a bash in France. I think it was Saint Marguerite in France, where the records are made on two state-of-the-art pressing machines, primarily for the Warner imprint BMG. Now, Sonopress believes all this effort is worth it, all this investment is worth it, especially when vinyl revenues rose by, what was it, 17.1% in 2022, and that was the third consecutive year of double-digit growth. Now, as I say, I initially heard about this process back in December of 2023, but I've now had more recent news which has prompted this item here. Now, if you've seen my recent Music Alerts video, the one with the Liam Gallagher and John Squire album, well, Sono Press has pressed its first eco record using that album as a sort of test pressing, you might say. And you can grab that particular limited edition orange vinyl pressing on Amazon. I think it's an Amazon exclusive. You can get that right now. That's been created with eco record techniques. Now, I have the original PVC pressing of this particular album. I have requested an eco record version too, and I'm happy to do an Imperfect A-B comparison. Imperfect because there's a host of variables when making a vinyl LP. So any results I get will have caveats, but even so, it might be worth a listen. It might be a bit of fun. Now, if putting out a review request to Warner Music doesn't work, I might have to put my hand in my pocket. Now, freelance journalists, I don't know if you know this, but freelance journalists never like putting their hands in their pockets to reach for money. It's against our religion, our code, and our solemn oath that we take before starting this job. So I'll see if one turns up from Warner Music first before I go through any unnecessary pain. Now, before I go, you'll want an answer to that trivia question. So here we are. To remind you, which two of these celebrated couples were never actually married? The list is Mick Jagger and Jerry Hall, Lisa Marie Presley and Michael Jackson, Paul Simon and Carrie Fisher, Chrissy Hind and Jim Kerr, and Rod Stewart and Britt Eklund. And the answer is Mick Jagger and Jerry Hall, and Rod Stewart and Britt Eklund. Now, Jerry Hall thought she was married to Mick Jagger, as did many other people, having gone through some species of ceremony in Bali in 1990. It was only 10 years later when the couple had broken up that the High Court in London decided that the marriage was invalid. Between 1975 and 1977, Rod Stewart and Britt Eklund were Britain's foremost celebrity couple, but they never married. One of the strangest aspects of the strange life of Michael Jackson was his two-year marriage to Elvis Presley's daughter, Lisa Marie, in 1994. Blimey, that seems such a long time ago. Anyway, he was married to her when he canoodled with Debbie Rowe, who at that time was working as the assistant to his dermatologist. The two married following his divorce from Presley. Paul Simon was married to Carrie Fisher between 1983 and 1984. That didn't last too long, did it? Jim Kerr was married to Chrissy Hind. This one lasted a little bit longer, between 1984 and 1990. And no, you haven't stepped into a video version of OK Magazine. We're still talking music and hi-fi here, folks. And that, folks, is the end of this video. It's a bit of a long one, isn't it, this time around, because of that eco record thing. Hope it was of some interest to you, and I'd like to see you back next week, because we're going to have another little soiree. So I'll be back. I hope you'll be joining me then. Until then, folks. Oh, and by the way, Thank you, as always, for all of your support. 
very much appreciated as usual. So you keep me going, which is very nice. Brings a tear to the old eye, obviously. Anyway, before I babble and get the hanky out, I'll bid you adieu right now. <laughs> And I hope to see you next week. I'm babbling, aren't I? I'm wandering off and just aimless talk. You've all gone, haven't you? I'm speaking to myself right now, aren't I? You, there's no one there. Hello? No, just an echo. Anyway, <laughs> I will hopefully talk to you, see you, whatever, next week. And I'll go before I make a complete embarrassment of myself. Bye.